איינה, הלו, 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 מאח המתח, המוסרי ג'אן, מאח היוניטי, מאח האוניון, איי, מאח רספק, מאי אופיניון, כמוסר נאמר כאי ג'אן, אנונג לייטס נא, נגיירי ג'אן סיין יונג, אנו, סיין יונג קיצ'ן טייבול, כמוסר פה אנו נתן, אנג מאח, Uh, mga lutong na maraming ano, maraming sibuyas. Ito na, ito na. Yung ating talagang expert na pangulo, meron ng solusyon na naman. At of course, yung mga solusyon na naman natin dito is import pa more. Import pa more. Yun lang talagang sagot, di ba? May problema ka, import mo na yan. Di ba? Ganun lang naman eh. Para wala na tayong problema. Import, import lang. Kahit of course, that could mean na Paubos na yung mga reserves natin, yung pera sa kaka-import-import. Of course, ang malaki problema talaga natin dito sa Pilipinas, mga kameta, is... Yan nga, mahina talaga tayo sa production, guys. Kaya, we're, sabi nga ni Sandro, economic expert Sandro, we're an import-oriented country, import-dependent country, at eto, nga, eto na nga, lalo tayo magiging import-dependent. At, you know, I mean, for a country na napakaganda yung climate, napaka-fertile yung soil, napaka decidido at at you know uh, hard working yung population i mean it's just really shocking that we always we always import stuff at dependent tayo sa mga import para lang uh, sukpuin no yung mga problema ng uh, domestic food production problems sa mga others nandiyan ba kayo mga kameta wait lang tinitingnan ko dito kung maayos ang ano natin live feed natin diyan mga kameta mga kameta dito kasi sa studio ko hindi ko nakikita yung mga Nagmo-move dyan. Ayan, kamusta kayo dyan mga kameta? Kamusta ang mga sibuyas natin dyan? Respect my opinion on yun. Ayan, talagang. Ano sabi nila? Pag ito ang presidente natin, talagang maayos na. Golden age. Golden age ng sibuyas price. No? <laughs> Ayan, pag-usapan natin yan mga kameta. So pag-usapan natin ng kameta, ito na naman. Mga mga nagreklamo na naman dyan. Okay, so may report na ang solusyon pala ng ating gobyerno is after recognizing na ang laki ng problema dito sa presyo ng sebuyas, ayan, mag-import na naman tayo ng maraming maraming sebuyas, but the question is, will it really make a dent? No? ba? Diba? And let's not forget, the president is also the agricultural secretary, and the point of the agricultural secretary is of course to ensure food security, and part of food security is also our domestic productive capacity, and ensuring may kakayan tayo to make sure na ano, ba? Diba? We can cover our own uh, uh, internal needs. Now, puntahan natin itong announcement ng ating mahal na presidente. Nag-approve ng 21,000 metric ton of onion importation. No? So, inaproba ng ating pangulo, 21,060 metric tons of onions, 940 metric tons less than the recommendation of the Department of Agriculture. So, in fairness naman to the president, Medyo kinunti niya doon sa recommendation. I don't know, maybe this is to make sure na hindi ma-overwhelm yung mga domestic producers natin. So, Agriculture Deputy Spokesman Rex, Rex Esto Perez, ayon sa kanya, President Marcos and Senior Undersecretary Domingo Panginibang already talked and the President approved the importation of 21,000 metric tons. No? Ayon sa kanya, the added volume of approved onion importation was slightly smaller from the one that was uh, suggested siguro to protect the domestic farmers, but the imported onions daw ay mag-arrive on January 27, 2027. So yan, maganda na tayo mga ka-onion, mga ka-unity. Baka sa late January, medyo maging ano na, masarap na kumain ng sibuyas. Dagdagan natin ang mga sibuyas natin dyan. Baka white onion, red onion, different onion, para masarap yung mga foods natin. So by end of this month, hopefully, Hopefully, the situation will improve pagdating sa presyo ng sebuyas, which obviously is a reflection of a more fundamental problem, which is yung runaway inflation situation na meron tayo. No? So ayon sa spokesman or deputy spokesman ng Department of Agriculture, the President agreed on the allocation of the imported bulbs wherein 50% or 10,530 metric tons will go sa Luzon. Ayan, mga kameta sa Luzon, mga ka-unity! 25% or 5,265 metric ton ay pupunta naman sa Visayas at Mindanao. Ayan, mga katatay dyan. Ayan, di ba? There will be mechanics. If you are strict at presence, we'll make sure we'll be more strict in the entry of imported onions. There'll be the first border control and second border control para sigurado yun na hindi magkakaroon ng abuso, runaway imports, at hindi ma-hurt siguro yung domestic industries natin. So, I mean, sa kanya, based on the monitoring of the Department of Agriculture, the farm gate prices of onion ranges between 
280 pesos to 300 pesos per kilo. Wow. Wow. This is crazy. This is crazy. Ano ba? Ano bang mga presyo mga kameta dyan? I mean, wow. 300? Sibuyas? Ibang klase. Ibang klase mga... Yang kasi. Yung ba kasi puro mga respect my opinion. Tuloy. Ayan. Nasibuyas tayo ng ganito. So, wow. Talagang... Ayon naman sa Farmers Group sa Mahang Industriya ng Agrikultura, Sinat President Rosendo So, ito ay isang problematic na options and the DA should be blamed for the spike in the prices after it did not improve the proposal of Sinat to import onions back in November 2022, therefore causing the traders to take advantage of the situation. So, yung pala, may backlog of importation last year, kaya ganitong situation ngayon. Ayon sa kanya, it is still the traders who will handle the importation. What they will do is to hoard their stocks at the cold storage facilities. If the purpose of the DA is to bring down the farm gate, the prices, the loser here are the farmers. So yung middleman, yung traders pa rin ang issue dito. At ang sinasabi ng mga kritiko or sinasabi ng ibang uh, advocacy groups, farmer advocacy groups, is that the pressure should be on the government to ensure that yung mga middleman hindi na yung situation, hindi sila nag-hoard. At yun nga, we're also paying the price for the backlog in importation uh, last year, November. So, may mga kakulangan na nangyari, no? Uh, yan po ang situation natin ngayon. Nonetheless, maraming skeptical kung this will still help the situation at all. So, uh, so ayon sa SINAG, uh, this is the same group, no? Uh, sa mga industry na agrikultura. In the first place, it was the DA who miscalculated the stocks of onion. When we recommended our importation in November, December, the DA should have allowed it. At the time, farmers didn't have the stocks. The stocks were in the hands of the trader, traders. No? So, uh, so, yun nga, yung concern nila is, so ayon sa kanila, the retail prices of onion could reach 500 pesos per kilo as the stock was only at 10%. If the importation is done now, farmers will suffer as the peak harvest will start in the second week of January. So, magkakaroon ng domestic harvest soon. Ito na, magsisimula na ngayon. E na bigla mag-import pa tayo ngayon. So, yung timing ay sablay. Di ba? At ayon sa kanila, ang mga benefit talaga dito is yung mga middlemen. So, yun yung problema. Uh, in the meantime, ayon kay Sir, uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, uh, in order niya yung National Bureau of Investigation, after hoarders and manipulators. So, we have to really crack down on that. no So, ayon sa kanya... Uh, the farm gate prices of onions in Nueva Ecija and Pangasinan now range between 200 pesos and 250 pesos a kilo. The farm gate prices have already gone down. It's not the fault of farmers why the retail prices remain. It should be a deal. We should make sure that the SRP, suggested so retail price, was followed. So guys, political will at enforcement. Law enforcement, more than even political will, ang kailangan dito mga kameta. No? So yan, nako po, onion still retail at between 540 and 600 pesos per kilo, no? based on the monitoring of local markets dito base sa Manila Times no so this is crazy so maabot pa sa 600 pesos per kilo oh my goodness i mean this is crazy so on january 3 at least 27.8 million worth of red and white onions frozen pork stomach pouch cuts and frozen boneless beef shanks uh, shanks in five containers were seized so may mga illegal importation na nangyari dito, may mga hoarding na nangyari dito. Ang daming kababalaga na nangyari dito. So ang tanong dito is anong ginagawa ng Department of Agriculture? And of course, the president being the also Secretary of Agriculture or acting secretary, ano naman ang ginagawa nila on this front? So this is the thing. I appreciate the fact that the president is trying to limit imports in order not to hurt the domestic producers, but I'm not sure we're doing as much or nearly enough, no, uh, to make sure or supuin so, natong problema ng hoarding at yung mga uh, uh, alleged hoarding and, and abuses that is happening by the intermediaries and traders na kumikita ng malaki do, uh, tung, uh, dahil dito sa uh, situation ng onion price hike. No? So, ito, mga, puro kasi mga respect my opinion ni iba, ayaw makinig. Marami tayong sinasabi last year pa, ayaw makinig. Ayan, ito yung situation ngayon. Good luck sa inyo. Alright, mga kameta, of course, for me, we have to keep in mind talaga the situation in the onion, yung sibuyas crisis or problems, ay isang simptomas pa lang na isang more fundamental problem. No? At katulad ng sinabi natin dun sa article natin today, no? mukhang what's ironic is that the president has been more successful in areas where there was not much expectations. For instance, I think he did a pretty decent job of at least recalibrating yung war on drugs ni Paolo Duterte to make it sure it's less deadly, less para-bara and less all over the place and more humane. At the same time, 
I think relatively more successful than president when it comes to the foreign policy, making sure more balancing relationship natin with uh, different powers, especially with China. Hindi tayo tatay style na I love China, I love Putin, yung mga ganon. I, I think that was pretty good. Uh, I think relatively okay din yung approach niya in handling the alliance, the whatever alliance or situation he has with the Duterte, despite some of the disagreements there. But when it comes to the economic front, and he's not being as effective as, you know, you know, his team and, and you know, empresarios were purporting. You know? uh, uh, we were expecting the president to be much more hands-on and effective in dealing with many issues, including the inflation situation. We're expecting him to be more hands-on when it comes to dealing with issues that had to do with food security, etc. And yet, tuloy-tuloy itong problema na ito. Now, as I said, of course, to be fair, my international aspect yan, my aspeto ito ng, of course, uh, changes in the you know in the global commodity markets, changes in in the global financial markets, money markets. Given that, but at some point, kaya nga hindi naman pwede lahat na lang blame sa external forces. Tapos if something goes right, lahat na lang credit natin sa dom- sa government natin. It doesn't work that way. So there has to be some acknowledgement ng inefficacy in macroeconomic management, especially on the inflation issue. At alam natin, sige, yung mga kameta, yung mga kaunyon na, ay mga community natin dyan, you can always talk about, you know, mataas na approval ratings, etc. Pero, wag natin kalimutan, sinabi ng Paul sa HH, mga authoritative service, pagdating sa inflation, net negative ang approval ratings ng administration nito. So, something has to be done in this front. And the president has been very much economics-focused dun sa kanilang, dun sa kanyang administration so far. So, and yet, we don't see really a break breakthrough, no, or even a breakout policy approach. Pag dating sa ekonomiya natin, and and I'm not sure if the inflation situation will significantly improve anytime soon, beyond sebuyas, no, because we're talking about pressure ng bigas. So tinigdang ko nung nung holidays, meron ba tayong mahanap ng bigas na on mass na available na twenty pesos? Para malabo, di ba? Yung mga pinakamurang nakita ko, at least doon sa bagyo, siguro mas mahal lang konti doon, 30 pesos. No? Yun yung pinakamurang version na nakita ko. So, we're nowhere close to where we're supposed to be after all the promises of golden age and so on and so forth by the president when he was the candidate for the highest office last year. No, So, this is this is something that we have to deal with. Now, I want to see a blueprint. I want to see some decisive moves by the president that show that we are seriously looking at a long-term strategy to deal with the food security problem in the Philippines, to deal with the inflation problems. At saka, yung meron tayong strategy para tulungan talaga yung ating mga magsasaka. Kasi kawawa, yung mga average age na, age na mas, magsasaka natin is mid-50s na yata, eh, di ba? And very few of them left. And the ano yung agriculture sector, nabugbog rin ng mga developers yan, mga land grabbers yan. Alam niyo na sino mga yan, no? di ba? Huwag na tayo magsalita. Uh, kausapin na lang si ano. <laughs> diba? So, this is where you need the enforcement of law and, and some exercise of strong leadership. At, at yun ang hinintay natin, no? And at the same time, of course, may mga updates din tayo on the other fronts. Let me just quickly go to that. Katulad ng pangako natin, I have to go back to that. So, we have some updates on the cabinet reshuffle, recent cabinet reshuffle issue that happened. By the way, there's also a new Supreme Court ruling. Dun sa joint maritime seismic undertaking ng China and Pilipinas at Vietnam ng panahon ni Arroyo, it has been ruled unconstitutional. So this is going to have huge implications for proposed ongoing negotiations for resource sharing with China just the West Philippine Sea. So that's going to complicate Marcos' diplomacy towards China. We'll discuss that in a separate meta soon, God willing. But balikan natin itong issue na ito, nung cabinet reshuffle na yan. So kanina, nag-break ng silence ang now ex Acting Officer in Chief of the Department of National Defense or Acting DND Chief Jose Faustino Jr. Uh, pretty strongly worded, no? Ang kanyang statement, mga kameta, diba? So I think it's pretty clear don sa statement niya na the re- the sudden change again don sa military da sa sa top upper yeah it's a, it's a military brass no namely the AFP chief was perhaps the deal breaker for him that's why he had irrevocable resignation here i'll go to the context shortly i'll go to the context shortly but let's try to just go through yung statement ni former general AFP chief and former DND chief uh, Faustino. sabi niya 
With the utmost respect, I submitted my irrevocable letter of resignation to the President, His Excellency Ferdinand Marcos Jr. on Friday, January 6, 2023, after learning only from news and social media reports that an oath of office of the new Chief of Staff AAP had taken place at Malacanang. So he's suggesting here that he was completely circumvented. Let's not forget, as a DND chief, he is the transmission belt between the commander-in-chief and the military. So he, he ensures civilian oversight of the armed forces because in a democracy, the armed forces are ultimately loyal to the constitution and they're answerable to the civilian leadership, democratic elected civilian leadership, so in principle of civilian supremacy. So the DND chief is very crucial transmission belt here. But in he was, he was circumvented, that he was not even informed about the process. He defended the AFP Sabinate as an out outright organization that is professional, highly capable, and committed to protecting our country and people from all threats, whether foreign and domestic, are dedicated, indomitable soldiers, airmen, sailors, and, and marines, value above all honor, service, and patriotism. These are the ideas that we live for and die for. But he had some pretty strong statements to make. So, uh, Sabinia, it is a highly disciplined and competent organization that will survive under any given circumstances. Thus, fully cognizant of the selfless sacrifice and courage of our troops and civilian human resources, I cannot allow the AFP's reputation to be tarnished, maligned, or politicized. I assure everyone that I will, be always the whole, I will always hold the AFP in high esteem, which, is, which, with, which its men and women have painstakingly uh, earned. So, you know, term, you know, tarnish, maligned, or politicized. Now, he did not point fingers in any specific directions. He didn't provide any specific details. But for him, the change in the military top brass was something that didn't sit well with him and therefore triggering his irrevocable, irrevocable resignation. Now, on the other side, let's go out of Sabi ko nga, di ba? We'll really look at the most credible and or verified information out there. So, katulad ng sinabi natin kahapon mga kameta, nag-express ng mga different branches of the military natin ng support for now for former and now again AFP Chief General Centino. And one thing interesting in notice here is the explanation provided by some in the admin and some also outside the government on what was going on. So, this is very interesting. So, apparently, this is one version. So, basahin niyan. So apparently, one version is that, according to an official sa government, sa Malacanang, Centino had originally been sidelined because a faction in Malacanang had allegedly orchestrated his ouster by offering him a sham appointment. I think this is the proposal for him to be uh, ambassador to India to pave the way for former military chief uh, to, to replace him. This, is, this happened last year. So by reinstating Centino, the palace was essentially rectifying the, quote, wrong done to Centino. Ayon sa source stands from Malacanang, uh, what you did to Andy was wrong, referring to people who took out Centino last year. So, but on their position is that the president is now kind of correcting that. Now, more clarity was provided by some uh, analysis by some top former officials. Check natin dito para, sabi ko, balikan natin talaga to, di ba? So, ayon naman sa... <laughs> Okay, ayon naman sa former AFP spokesperson, Major General Edgar Arevalo, was the reappointment of Centino meant to correct the perceived mi miscues of then-Executive Secretary Vic Rodriguez under Hustin Bakara was appointed to succeed Centino? In, is this a way of restitution for Centino and finally retiring Bakaro, who could have retired on September 18 last year palang. So, this is the prevailing message coming out from some people in the government and outside the government saying that this was more like a corrective measure Therefore, so you know, all of those idea na uh, you know a former president or administration, whatever was behind blah blah blah. Mohang, that's not really the case here. Mohang, this at least based on this version of the events, this is much more related to the former executive secretary and some of the quote unquote questionable appointments that happened back then. You no, know? so this is the president stepping in and correcting things. So for the support of the president or those who are more uh, amenable to what happened. The president is exercising political will to correct a mistake and get things in order. But still, I think many questions remain and there are a lot out there who are looking at the situation saying, but and dami kami members nang resign over the past five, six months or so. And why umaabot na ganitong situation whereby suddenly the military chief has to be replaced, why suddenly the DNT chief has to be replaced, all of those things. So, so this is the latest updates we have as far as the 
context of the latest reshuffle in the cabinet is concerned, mga kameta. All right? Balikan natin yan as we get more and more updates on that. So as I said, bukas, hopefully, balikan natin yung issue ng su Supreme Court ruling, yung latest Supreme Court ruling ukol sa JMSU, Joint Exploration Agreement na sinay ni Arroyo with China and Vietnam and what are the implications of that. Alright, mga kameta, balikan natin yan. Let me say thank you dun sa lahat ng mga supporters natin as usual. Ay, nabalik na tayo, mag-dinner na tayo. Back to duties and all. Let me just thank everyone. I hope helpful itong contextualization na ginagawa natin dito, mga kameta. Uh, we're just trying to approach these quite sensitive issues, no? complicated issues in the most credible, less Marites-ish way possible. So, pasensya na sa mga kon yun kung hindi sila natuwa dun sa mga ibang sinabi natin. This is just the truth, right? Thank you kay Riz Annie, kay Jocelyn Lomberio. Thank you so much sa lahat. Thank you all again kay Ma Victoria Omali also for joining us. I appreciate this. Kay Cabana Jasmir for joining us. Kay Noemi Tablada, thank you again for your support as always. I appreciate it kay... Okay, S. Nagi, kay Marty Panganiban, kay Michael Uy, thank you so much dun sa mga support nyo, kay Rick Natividad, thank you kay Manay She for joining us, for Corazon Mecho for joining us. Ayan, thank you very much, alright? So mga kaonyon, okay, hopefully, hopefully, baba yung presyo ng onion para pwede naman kayo magbisita sa akin ng, ano, pang mga Italian foods natin dyan, alright? Alright, salamat dyan, guys. Kain muna ako. Siguro hindi muna si Boyas for a while. Tignan natin ang mangyari. Talk to you soon. Anyway, I'm smiling, but this is a serious issue, guys. This is a very serious issue. We're talking about inflation. We're talking about food security. These are serious, serious issues. So I hope to see more exercise of political will by the president in a good way, in a way that enforces the law and is accordance to the rule of law. Hindi pa yung political will yung purong diktador, authoritarian, bara-bara, tatay style. That's, that's not really, really strong, strong political will. No, I, well, I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about enforcing the law I'm, I'm talking about conviction politics. All right? Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you soon.